Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining horizontal and vertical lines. And so I'll be explaining what they look like as an equation, and then I'll also show you what they look like when they're placed on the x, y coordinate system here. So a horizontal line is a line that goes from left to right. It has a slope of zero. So let's go ahead and write that down over here. So for a horizontal line, we have a slope, which we'll refer to as the letter M, and the slope is zero. And then we'll also say that uh, the direction of a horizontal line is left to right. If I was to draw a horizontal line on this X, Y coordinate system, I could do that by making it parallel to the X axis. So we could just uh, do a horizontal line right about there. And so this is a horizontal line, it's parallel to the x-axis, it goes left to right, and it has a slope of zero. So on the other hand, a vertical line, we'll go ahead and write that over to the side as well. So a vertical line is going to have a slope, which we'll refer to as m, and the slope is actually going to be undefined. So you might argue that it doesn't really have a slope since the slope is undefined. And so an undefined slope means that the direction of the line is actually up and down. So if I was to go ahead and draw a vertical line on the x-y coordinate system, it would look something like this. So here we have a vertical line, and here we have a horizontal line. The horizontal line has a slope of zero, it travels left and right, and the vertical line has a undefined slope and it travels up and down. So how can we describe a horizontal and a vertical line with a mathematical equation? Let's just go ahead and plot the x and y components at different locations on this line. The first point we're going to look at, we'll just go down here where y is equal to negative 7, and we'll go ahead and examine this point, and then we'll go ahead and examine this point right here, and then maybe we'll do another point right there. And it might be neat to do the intersection as well of these two lines. So let's just go ahead and look at this. So if we're looking at this point right here, we can see that we have a y component of 5 here. So on our point, we'll put a y component of 5. And our x component, we go over 1, 2, 3, 4. We have an x component of 4. So let's look at this point right here. So here we have a y component of 1, 2, 3. So we'll put 3 in the y position of our point. And then we have an x component of 1, 2, 3, 4. Going down to this point right here, we have a y component of negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we'll put that right here, negative 3. And we have an x component, once again, of 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 is our x component. And if we go down to the very bottom, we have a y component of negative 7 here. So this point has a y component of negative 7. And once again, we go over 4 units in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have an x component of 4. The pattern with this vertical line is that all of the x components are equal to 4. So it makes sense that we can describe this vertical line as x is equal to 4. So what happens when y equals 5? Well, when y equals 5, x equals 4. Well, what happens when y equals 3? When y equals 3, x equals 4. And as we go all the way up and down this vertical line, no matter what value we choose for y, we always get an x value of 4. So therefore, this vertical line can be described as x is equal to the number 4. Now, in general, we can say that a vertical line can take the form x is equal to some number a. So if, for example, a was equal to 7, we'll just put x is equal to 7. So x equals 7 would describe the line, we go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units in the x direction, and then we can go ahead and draw our line here.
And so this vertical line here now that crosses the point x equals 7 is the line described by the equation x equals 7. So let's just go ahead and write that down real quick. So we have x is equal to 7. That describes this vertical line right here. And this vertical line right here is described by the equation x is equal to 4. So now let's take a look at this horizontal line right here. Let's go ahead and plot a few points for this line as well. So let's go ahead and just look right there. And then maybe we'll look right here and we'll check the, we already have the intersection right here. And then maybe we'll just kind of look at the end right here and we'll see what kind of pattern we can discover. So if we look right here, this point can be described by going negative seven units in the X direction and then going up one, two, three units in the Y direction. So this point we can write as an X component of negative seven and a Y component of three. So looking at this next point right here, in order to get to this point, we need to go negative one, negative two units in the x direction. That brings us here. And then we go up one, two, three units in the y direction. So this point can be described by the x value negative two and the y value three. Here, we already know that this one is described by the x coordinate four and the y coordinate three. So looking at this last one right here, if we go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 units in the x direction, that gives us an x component of 10. And then we just simply go up one, two, three units in the y direction gives us a y component of three. So now if we look at the pattern of the points that we've plotted on this horizontal line, we see that no matter what value x has, here we have negative seven, negative two, four, and 10 for our x values, but it doesn't matter what x values we have because this is a horizontal line. All of the corresponding y values are equal to the value three. We have three, 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 and three for all of our y values. So because of this, we can go ahead and describe the horizontal line that I've drawn here by the equation y is equal to three because it doesn't matter what values x are, y is always going to be three. So in general, we can write the equation for a horizontal line as y is equal to some number a. So for example, if I said that y is equal to, and then I chose my a to be the number negative five, then that would represent the horizontal line that passes through the y component of negative five. So we go down one, two, three, four, to the negative five right here on the y-axis. And then we just go ahead and draw a horizontal line through that point. This horizontal line can be represented by the equation y is equal to negative five. And so by the same type of reasoning, the first horizontal line that I have above here can be represented by the equation y is equal to three. So all vertical lines in the xy coordinate system can be represented by x is equal to some number a. On the xy coordinate system, a horizontal line can be represented by the equation y equals a. So in a nutshell, a vertical line takes the form x equals some number, and that number is the location where the vertical line crosses the x-axis. And for a horizontal line, it takes the form y is equal to some number, and that number is the location where the horizontal line crosses the y-axis. So anyway, I hope that helps explain horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, stay tuned for the next lesson in the Intermediate Algebra playlist. You guys have an excellent day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.